Hello everyone, this is a uh, one hour and 40 minute stream that's been sped up 15 times, I think, into this seven minute video. And this is me doing a metal chest with uh, sculpted decorations. It's kind of like a pirate treasure chest or something. And uh, it's been a while since I did one of these streams, so I decided to make something that involved both 3D modeling and uh, texture painting and hand painted uh, texture for that. I used um, a quarter of the chest and then mirrored it two times both on the X and the Y axis and just uh, created the, the chest like that. So it saved texture space, it saved time as well because again this was basically a practice piece that I just used uh, as a way to do another stream. Uh, these are the pieces for the handles and they're basically created off of uh, a duplicate of the polygon that they're going to be sitting on which is not uh, vertical. It's it's kind of slanted because of the tapered effect on the chest. Now as you can see because of the mirroring there's another lock on the other side of the chest but I ignore it for now as I'm creating the UVW textures and once I'm complete with the modeling I just delete that extra bit of geometry that's not going to be used for anything. Even the handles they were just made by extruding the same polygon as the base for the handles and then rotated to create that sort of tube and me, I'm just, uh, right now, I'm just sorting out the clusters for the UVWs. I don't use automated tools to do this because then I kind of don't know where things are in the texture. And I much prefer to paint the texture on flat view rather than on top of a 3D model, which um, doesn't work well if you start with a flat base. I know some people start with ambient occlusion textures, but to bake those, I would have to make a high resolution model, which I honestly just don't see the point of doing that. If you're not going to use it afterwards in game, it's just t so time consuming. But again, people model things differently, different approaches. So the model is going to be previewed in Unity uh, with an unlit material with the texture. And I'm going to be painting the texture in Photoshop. Um, I'm having some trouble here during the stream to make both things fit on the screen because I want people to be looking at the model constantly because it saves me from alt tabbing and sometimes forgetting to switch softwares. So um, I apply a basic gradient on the top just to get the light source uh, information and I start by painting the um, just the detail on the lock and a little bit on the creases around the model just as a way to set my lighting straight away. I also add lights on other bits that protrude out of the base shape. And uh, these are the kind of details that I'm going to go for, some sort of floral uh, patterns. I see how they look like on the model and I start shading them straight in. Now being that this is metal, probably either brushed steel or some sort of silverish uh, kind of look, if it was today for like a movie prop it would probably be done in aluminium. And that usually sticks um, when you see them in movies, they, they stick to those materials. So this is what it looks like on the material. It looks like... Um, I mean, it, it does look to have some volume, but it looked flat, so I made this a sunken in bit, and now everything looks a little bit more framed inside of that metal aspect. For the top here, I do this kind of leaf pattern that sort of radiates out, which kind of looks like a cross, so I think that this would something that would probably have been involved in that, that period aesthetics. We're talking about the Georgian area, um, era uh, pre-Victorian, I think. Um, so the technique here is that the light source is almost above of this part of the texture. It's not um, in front, not necessarily above as the other one that I was doing. So everything has to be shaded accordingly rather than shaded with a light source that's above the texture space, but more in front of it, almost like if I had a helmet with a light on it. And on the 3D model, it kind of looks, I mean, it doesn't look good when you put it from this point of view because you can see how flat the model really is because it lacks the geometry to support those details, especially if they're drawn with such a contrast between light and shadow where you would say they clearly have to have volume. They're not just some low relief thing like a, an emboss on a piece of leather or anything like that. They're actually geometry um, that should be modeled, but I didn't really have the time at all to do. So this is just a corner piece that's going to act as my way to place something in the corners as well as it gives me a good contrast for the base. Uh, this cross here is just to help me find where those pieces are because I'm going to use them as reference. I'm going to paint a big fleur de lis um, on the side here um, or a lily tree, a lily flower. Uh, and I use gradients as an example here to show that 
just because it's a gradient doesn't mean it has volume. It might be a gradient, but it, it can look really flat. So a good approach of just shading this according to the light source and having that into consideration is always much more efficient than throwing in a bunch of gradients randomly. I did throw a gradient at the beginning, but that was just to give me a starting point from the light and from the range of colors that I was going to use, not for the base of the shading. Uh, I copied the top of those pixels from the bottom part of the chest onto the cover of the chest, or the lib of the chest, so that I have the same color reference, because those two are offset, which is really stupid. I should have lined them up in the UVW, because not only did I have the space for that, it actually made more sense if I did that. Uh, so I just finished pinning it the, the fleur de -lis, uh, bit here at the bottom. And then I'll move on to doing some details on the, um, on the lock, which is the only bit that looks a little less um, worked. Um, and also play around a little bit with the possibility of this being a metal, um, a metal chest with some highlights um, or some details in gold, either gold leaf or just plain gold, which would be ridiculous. It's still the chest even if it was empty. Um, in this part here, I use a different technique. I use the white to create the, the, the trim or the top edge of the relief of the, the detail. And then I basically add light wherever I think that works um, more than just um, drawing the light and then the shadow. I just start with a center line. So here I'm just creating shapes with selections to erase from the color layer, which I'm going to use to create the gold effect. At this point, it's kind of like a brass or uh, or more of a copper uh, look, so I changed it to more yellow, and it's still not the final yellow, which I'm going to uh, make a little more saturated in the final in the final uh, image by uh, playing around. Here we go, playing around with the levels. So that's the complete model. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you some other time. Take care.